virtual programming. We would absolutely love to host you on campus this year and we know that that's just not possible. And so we're trying everything that we can to at least engage you in different ways and get you to know the campus even though you can't be here with us. But the purpose of this session is for you to hear a bit more about the nutrition and college dining experience, whether your student is participating in it now or whether they're considering a meal plan or looking at what the college has to offer when it comes to eating. Um, there is a Q&A button at the bottom of our webinar. So if you do have any questions at any point, please feel free to toss them in there and I will be looking at those. Um, if anything comes in through the chat, I'll try to find that also. And then we are recording this session. So if you'd like to review it, because we had some really great information, or if there is, um, you know, you're watching it as a recording with us, please just feel free to um, use any of that. But why don't we go ahead and get started? And so I'd like to introduce Billy Heigl, who serves as our Assistant Food Service Director at Aramark with us here at Flagler College. Billy, would you mind sharing with us a little bit about what you do here at Flagler? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, thanks for uh, having me on, Tara. This is awesome that we get to talk about dining with everybody here today. Um, so my role is the Assistant Food Service Director here on campus. I primarily oversee the Ponce Dining Hall facility, which is our large all you care to eat um, campus location. I also assist in overseeing the retail side, which has a Chick-fil-A location, a Starbucks, a Boar's Head Deli, all nestled in a small little food court within the Ringhaver Student Center. And on the opposite side of campus, back behind FEC attached to the parking garage is Bear Hall, where on the first floor in the common area, we have a pod marketplace, which is a small convenience store location where students can grab anything they need for their dorm room, small necessities and small dining options if they can't for any reason, make it over to the other side of campus at any point in time. I know each one has its own little personality, I feel like. And so depending on the type of experience <laughs> that a student would like, they can choose where to go. Yeah, very true. We try and keep it as customizable as possible for students. So they have a lot of different options depending on their mood or what's going on with the weather. I mean, we all know St. Augustine weather can change in five minutes. So sometimes <laughs> a 10 minute walk for a meal is not very feasible during lunch hours. Yeah. So we have a couple pre-prepared questions of ones that we typically see a whole lot either through email or on social media or that you all get. So we'll take some time to go through those. Um, again, if anybody does have any questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A and we'll be sure to address them. But I know first and foremost, considering what we're going through now and the current climate and how we are trying to make as much of a college experience as possible, could you share a little bit about what eating on campus looks like these days? Yeah, so I mean, I mentioned a little bit with all the multiple different locations we have. Um, it's a little bit different than a standard year, as is everything that people are going through right now in these unprecedented times, as everybody continues to say. <laughs> Um, but we, we're doing our best to try and make sure that we have a lot of options available for students at any point in time. So I'll just go through the locations primarily. The Pod Marketplace will go backwards from the first conversation. Pod Marketplace is what we ended with before. That is a convenience store where students can use their dining dollars, which come loaded on all of the on-campus plans and some of the commuter plans that are available. The dining dollars are just as good as cash. The students can use them to purchase anything within the convenience store or anything really in dining services. Um, and then we also have a meal exchange program there. So if students can't make it to one of the other dining facilities for a meal, say they live in Bear or FEC halls, um, they can go in there and use a meal exchange swipe where they can get a snack or a meal along with a bag of chips or a piece of fresh fruit and a bottle of water or a Coca-Cola beverage. Um, they can use that during breakfast times, lunch times or dinner times, anytime when the pod marketplace is actually open. Um, and then we have our bistro location within the Ringhaver Student Center. That's one of our most popular spots on campus. Um, our Starbucks is always cranking first thing in the morning. It's a <laughs> we proudly serve Starbucks. Um, so we have, I'd say 90% of the menu available that a standard Starbucks would have. We don't carry the Starbucks standard foods. However, we do have other breakfast items available, loaf cakes. Um, we just brought in fresh pies actually within the last week. It's a new item served from the Boar's Head counter right next to Starbucks. Um, we have Boar's Head create your own sandwiches available. Um, that's a mixed market location as well. So we have soda machines available. We have three large grab and go coolers there. Um, we have a lot of different beverages available from Coca-Cola along as a small selection of Pepsi beverages and Starbucks bottled beverages.
And then uh, just past Boar's Head in that location, we have our newly remodeled Chick-fil-A, um, where you can get all your Chick-fil-A favorites. Um, the only thing that we don't do at that Chick-fil-A is breakfast. Um, we're not open for breakfast hours during that Chick-fil-A or at that Chick-fil-A. However, we do have dining options available through Starbucks there for breakfast, and we have our main dining facility in the Ponce Dining Hall. The Ponce Dining Hall was recently renovated, a huge renovation, long overdue, might I add, where we have incorporated a modern feel with the old, like you can see behind me, the old feel that the Ponce Dining Hall is so famous for. In that area, we have a dedicated vegan station. We have a grill station. We have our traditions line, which is also commonly referred to as the home line, where mm -hmm. you can get your standard items that, you know, it's on a re weekly, four-week rotating cycle to where we have items like fan favorites, like sloppy joes, spaghetti and meatballs, things like that, the real comfort food that students really yearn for. And then in the second pod, in that, uh, that individual kitchen out front, we have a handcrafted deli, which we just were allowed to reopen so students can actually have create your own sandwiches made. Finally, we've gotten a step further with dining here, being allowed to open a little more. Next to that, we have our delicious destinations menu, which is another uh, re weekly rotating four week cycle menu, where we have each week is a different region of the world. Uh, this next week we're going into is going to be Southeastern Asia. So there's going to be like a Vietnamese bowl. There's going to be faux noodles one day, things like that. The following week we will jump into, I believe, ramen week. After that is the Mediterranean and Middle East Eastern week. And then following that, there will be a Hispanic week. And then just around the corner from that, we have our pizza station where we have a rotating pizza cycle. Um, every day is a new pizza special followed with the traditional cheese and pepperoni that students always enjoy. Out front, we have a salad bar with pre-made grab and go options. And then directly across from that during breakfast times, we have a smoothie bar where students can get a healthy option with a smoothie created every day by our little Miss Debbie, who is the sweetest and most valuable employee I have during the mornings. And then we also introduced last year what we call the late night bites area. So on weeknights up until 10 p.m., which is two hours after regular dining service for dinner closes, we have grab and go options available for students out in the front in the room that's commonly referred to as P1, which is right behind the register stand. And on Fridays, it's open two hours after dinner. Dinner closes a little earlier on Fridays because most students are on their way out to have a good time around town and enjoy the sights. Um, but we keep it open until 9 p.m. on Fridays for students to come in and get all sorts of stuff. And we actually lately have partnered with Coca-Cola from now while supplies last, we have free Coca-Cola energy drinks available to all students anytime they enter the dining hall as well. Just in time for midterms. <laughs> Just in time. We know they need that energy to stay up and get that cramming done. Ooh, well, I mean, I'm kind of hungry now because you've like taken us through all of these options. Um, so I know that, especially with the announcement that came out campus wide yesterday that we're moving to level two, um, you know, I myself went and grabbed something uh, for lunch yesterday at the bistro, but could you talk a little bit about like what are the different precautions you all are taking and then maybe how they're going to be changing overnight since we are making that move. Right. So as far as changes between level two and level three with dining services, the college has been very gracious with us. And the primary differences that we're going to be developing as we move forward here is really involving faculty and staff. Now that they're going to be allowed back in, we're hoping we'll be in We'll be able to allow them eventually to sit and eat in there. Um, dining capacity has not really changed. Um, we're still following CDC guidelines when it comes to that. So we're at half capacity. Um, and then we're still allowing students to take to-go food anytime they would like. However, the main difference for students is we will no longer be highly encouraging to go. Um, students have always had their own decision when it comes to that. If they'd like to dine in, they're more than welcome to. We still have our hands tied when it comes to opening up more seats, but we're hoping soon. The main things we've been able to do is really bring back stations with made to order items, the create your own things. Um, we're still not allowed to have buffets back where students can serve themselves. Um, we're working towards that. By the time we get back to phase one, we will. And as far as precautions go, we're not slacking on any of the cleaning and hygiene precautions. Just because we've reached a, a lower stage for cautionary procedures doesn't mean that we're going to gamble and take a chance on sanitizing high touch areas, changing out hand wash stations, um, rotating utensils or anything like that. 
Um, I believe that COVID has really helped us set a new standard in the food service mm -hmm. industry when it comes to hygiene, when it comes to cleanliness and sanitation standards. And I don't see us backing down anytime soon when it comes to that, because just like everyone else that works here on campus at Flagler, students are our number one priority and keeping them safe is something that we don't take lightly. Yeah, well, and I think it's worked out so well in the different locations that you all have this process of coming and turning in a to-go container and then they get a new one and then they're able to go to the different stations. Um, the arrows on the ground, I'm a big fan of because I will be like, oh, look at what that station is making over there. But it's really forcing me to be aware of my surroundings and what's out there. And, and in the bistro, what I really like is that you place your order and then you wait outside. So there's not a big congregation. Of, yes of individuals um, and it also it kind of makes me feel a little bit special um, I get to see them a little bit and they bring it out to me um, and and I do appreciate those different precautions um, it's, it's been interesting to see the students now taking their food to different places around campus it's like this double-edged sword if you want them to be together in the dining hall but it is kind of nice to see them finding space out on the grass or at the different tables absolutely um, we did have a, a question come in. Um, will Starbucks let students use their Starbucks cards and stars? So being a we proudly serve, not a full service Starbucks, we are not tied directly into a customer management pay system that Starbucks utilizes. So unfortunately, we are not allowed to use non Flagler specific coupons. I do still give out, I host, we call them surprise and delight events. It's part of a new initiative we've launched this year in order to give students a little bit more value with their meal plan where I show up at the prize wheel at different locations. Um, students and parents, faculty um, can all follow us on Instagram. I post first thing in the morning when we're gonna do one of those. But at this point in time, because we are not a fully integrated Starbucks, we are not allowed to accept Starbucks coupon stars or the app. Gotcha. Um, one thing you mentioned there was the meal plans. And so many of our students that are living on campus have the expectation of meal plans, or especially for our first year students, like they come rolled in with one. Could you talk about like it's October 3rd right now? And so could students get a meal plan now if they're living off campus or or how could they add more? What, what's that process? Absolutely. So students are always welcome at any point in time to purchase a meal plan. The easiest way to do it, especially to find which one is going to fit you personally, is you go to flagler.campusdish.com. Um, there is what's called a find your fit meal plan finder on there and it walks you through all the different steps involved with deciding which meal plan is right for you, how many times you're on campus, if you live on campus or off campus, how many times you dine in each specific location. And it's really just sort of a flow chart that it builds a questionnaire around your answers. And then it recommends two or three different meal plans that would fit your lifestyle and your dining needs. Um, if you aren't tech savvy or would not like to purchase it online, you can always visit us in our dining office located in the Ponce Dining Hall, or you can shoot us an email for more information about the individual dining plans at diningservices at flagler.edu. And then we actually have two specials going on right now when it comes to meal plans. Uh, they were just sent out, I believe, in the email blast yesterday about we have a block 20 commuter plan to where it comes with $100 in dining dollars added onto it. If you sign up for that now, we just extended it for a whole nother week, you get an extra amount of dining dollars added onto it. And then we also have the dining dollars boost going on right now that if you reload with $100, you get an extra $15 for free added on it. So, and those bonus dollars do not, not expire. So as long as you're still a student here at Flagler, if you haven't used that extra $15, they just stay right on there. They'll roll over it with your account as long as you're a student here. Oh, nice. I, I like sometimes when you get to a certain point in the semester and when I'm behind them in line at the bistro and they're like, how much do I have left? And they're like checking in their balance. Yes. And the students can always check their balance um, ahead of time even. You can log right in at any register. You just ask them to do an inquiry for you. You tap your card, you hand it to the cashier, and they can swipe it and tell you down to the penny how much money you have left. And I think these commuter meal plans are so important to have that discussion with our students and families, especially when, um, you know, as we're going to be adding back more of those on campus classes and experiences for students, you know, it takes that stress away of trying to figure out food when you're running in between classes. And Very knowing true. that the convenience is right here, they can grab something and go, um, and, and made to order options and, and very easily accessible options that are for them. Um, so definitely considering that commuter meal plan is, is great. 
So uh, what assistance can we offer for students who are requesting accommodations or restrictions? Well, the number one step that I would recommend to any student is be your own advocate. Contact us, dining services at flagler.edu. You can come visit us in the dining office. All the locations have both my card and Jen Sykes card. She's the general manager of the account. Um, and we're, we're open books when it comes to it. Please contact us for any dietary need, any comments, suggestions, complaints, issues you're having. We're here for you um, 100%. It's the whole reason I get up and go to work every day is because I want to be there to help serve these students the best food that we can get them each and every day. Um, on top of that, we have small indicators throughout all of the different areas we're on campus with food. We have food and nutritional labels available upon request if it's not directly printed on the packaging. We also have menu and recipe cards. It's a little index card at all the stations within the dining hall that there's colored coded indicators on all of them. If it's a vegan dish, it'll have a darker green logo on it. If it's a vegetarian dish, it'll have a lighter green logo on it. It has all the fat calorie information. And if the information you're looking for isn't on that recipe card, all you have to do is ask a manager. We will bring you any food label from any product we source from. We can find the information on where the things are grown for you. We can get you any information about the food that we serve at all but a moment's notice. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's a little harder to find things and it might take us a few minutes to dig out the recipe, but we can always get it for you. And then if you have allergen restrictions, dietary needs, um, specific things like that, schedule a meeting with us. We have a separate private allergen kitchen for students with things like nut allergies, extreme gluten intolerances, that sort of stuff. So you can have your own separate area where we can help prepare your meals. We can do individual shopping trips for you. We really try and go the extra mile because just because you have something that might hamper you being able to eat off of every station within our dining facility, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't get to experience the value. We don't want you to have to compromise your dining experience just because of an issue that you might have. And I think that's, that's something to consider is, you know, we don't want a student to feel nervous or apprehensive or uncomfortable that they'd like to request some different accommodations. And right. I love that students can see the upcoming menus for the week. And so then they can help plan for any of those accommodations that they'd like and, and have those open conversations with you all. Yeah. Uh, so how could students now partner with you on healthy meal choices? We have all these fun different options and I myself love a good buffet. However, it would be great sometimes to discuss with somebody like healthy meal choices. Right. So for healthy meal choices, I, I've gone over the stations that we have, the different options we have on all those uh, recipe cards, the menu cards that we have up. There's also nutritional information on all of those. Um, even though the National Menu Labeling Act isn't necessarily as active as it was, we still follow it. Um, the nutritional information is available down to calories, saturated fats, um, polysaturites, all those sorts of things um, for all the ingredients that we use and all the dishes that we create. If you have a specific dietary need, whether it's, you know, getting a certain amount of protein at a station that isn't offered, once again, all you have to do is ask. We will partner with you in any way, shape, or form necessary to make sure that you are confident in the dining program and that you're getting what you need to eat each and every day for each and every meal period. Um, we have vegan, vegetarian options available at all of our locations. Um, we have gluten-free options available at all of our different locations. Um, even Chick-fil-A, we have gluten-free buns available now. So we try and make sure that there's a lot of options available for students. And if it comes to healthy eating, if you ever feel there aren't enough healthy options for you, please come by, shoot me an email, let me know what I can do for you. A lot of times, all that really takes is taking a tour of the dining facility with one of the managers so we can enlighten students or faculty or staff members as to what we do offer. It's, it's a large facility and with three different locations, a lot of people don't spend the time looking around because they are in a rush or get the opportunity to. I mean, when you come in and it's crowded, it's hard to find everything sometimes. It's a little easier this year because we're not quite as crowded as we usually are. We don't have 400 students all eating together at the same time. But I understand sometimes that if you're not told about how to find the things, you're never going to look for them necessarily. So like I said before, be your own best advocate for it. Please contact us and we will absolutely help you in any way, shape possible. Yeah. Um, just as a reminder, we do have that Q&A. And so if there's any other questions that are coming through, please feel free to, to ask them of us. 
Um, one thing that we are trying to let our families know is um, for my team, we do a lot of the different activities on campus and where we're trying to obviously engage students and connect them with the college. Um, and we are partnering with Aramark that when we are offering food, it is in a very health and safe way right now, looking at, um, you know, all those precautions. And so individually wrapped items or that they're served by an employee that's got um, a mask and gloves on and everything like that. Um, well, I think to kind of wrap us up a little bit, do you have any other recommendations that uh, we could give to maybe our families on how they could support their student when it comes to eating on campus? The number one thing, I, I you know, probably sound like a, a broken record here, but be an advocate for it. Um, it's just like any issue you ever have with anything in your life. If there's a problem, don't let it go. Bring it to our attention immediately. Um, we are 100% here for the students, as is every faculty and staff member on this campus. Um, we want to make sure that you're getting everything that you need in your life when it comes to nutrition and food. And if there's anything we can ever do to add, to take away, that sort of thing, we're always willing to, you know, lend an ear to it, a helping hand in any way that we can. I mean, our entire dining hall renovation that we've just did, we did entirely based off of the design of it came from what students wanted. We have survey opportunities throughout the year where students can voice their opinion. Parents can get involved as well, faculty, staff. I even have my own staff rate the other dining areas on campus versus theirs so we can get feedback because secret as in, yeah, you have to secret shop it as, as in anything in life, when you're doing it for a long time, sometimes you can find the blinders. And so you need people to help enlighten you and look at things from a different light. And so please provide valuable feedback at any point in time. Don't ever be afraid to say something as we are wanting to be better at everything we do each and every day. Absolutely. And something that I can attest to with Billy and his team is that they are always stationed at different tables in high traffic areas to get that feedback from our students. And so whether it's, you know, prize wheels that I've seen you guys out there with or, or different chances for students to just, you know, ask questions or express, you know, some of their concerns or wants. Um, that they are always available. Um, another question that's come in is the college did make the announcement that after Thanksgiving, we would be going virtual with our classes, but the college is still open and our residence halls are still open. So what does that mean for eating on campus? Honestly, it just means um, shorter queue times, I would think, when you're waiting for your Chick-fil-A sandwich. Uh, it, we, we don't plan on changing anything un, unless the school mandates that we alter the dining program in any way, shape, or form. Dining services, residence halls, and everything on campus is still going on just as planned. There aren't any closures documented or anything like that. I mean, dining services is here if it's 20 students or if it's 2,000. We're still performing the best that we can every day. Yeah, and this is your student's home. This is, you know, yes. and, and at home, you hopefully can feel comfortable eating. <laughs> so we want to have that for you. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us, Billy. I don't see any other questions that have come through. Uh, one thing we do want to make you aware is that today we are still offering a lot more different programming for you for Saints Weekend. So we hope that you'll join us at one o'clock for Advising 101, where we will be joined by our case team, which it stands for our Center for Advising and Core Experience. We know that all of a sudden students come home and they start talking about, I'm taking these classes and this is what I chose. And as families, we may not know why they chose those or what the purpose of some of those classes are. And so those individuals will be taking you through that process and what those conversations look like. And then at three o'clock, we'll be joined by our Counseling Center and Health Services for an overall wellness uh, and your student and what that looks like. And I think it'll be um, very insightful to consider what this time now looks like regarding wellness for your student. At six o'clock, I myself am pretty excited to join virtually with one of our faculty members on a boat tour of St. Augustine. And so he lives for the water. He lives for bringing his students to the water. And it was a very successful in-person event that we had last year. And so we're just going to try virtually to bring it to you. So if you wanted to see what the waterways look like from St. Augustine with a faculty member at 6 p.m., you'll be able to do that. And then at 7.30 tonight, a Flagler favorite is our trivia. 
And so please join us in our family trivia night at 7.30. I know my daughter who's eight, she loves joining me for trivia whenever we have it at Flagler. So hopefully you'll be able to join us as well. But for the full list of schedule and links for all of these events, you can find them on our website, flagler.edu slash saintsweekend. So Billy, thank you again for joining us. We wish you all continued health and safety during this. And we hope your students are enjoying Flagler as much as we are. See you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>